All right, so what I have here today is a teleconverter. Now this happens to be the Fujifilm 1.4 times teleconverter. And the way it works, the way all teleconverters work is they extend the range of a telephoto lens. And the way it works is basically you attach this to the camera body and then the lens itself attaches to the teleconverter. And it works pretty good. And as you can see, it's not very large. In fact, compared to the 18 to 55, a very common lens in the Fuji X system, it's not very large at all. So it's got some advantages to it. One of the advantages obviously is lightweight. You can carry this thing around in a little pack. You barely notice it. And when you want to increase your lens range by let's say 1.4, then all you do is you, put, you attach this to your body. Now, uh, the other advantage, obviously, is that you aren't spending a whole lot of money. Uh, this doesn't cost nearly as much as a dedicated lens of the same range. Uh, the dedicated lens uh, would be larger, cost more than the setup that I currently have. There are some disadvantages, though, and this is disadvantages that happens with any teleconverter. It doesn't matter the brand, and it's just because of physics. Some of the disadvantages is a loss of light. You'll lose maybe one, maybe two stops of light, depending on the magnification. And that means that your lens won't be quite as fast. An f2.8 lens will, uh, at, at this uh, loss of one stop of light, would be an f4 lens, for instance. On certain teleconverters, you also lose the advantage of autofocus. So you won't be able to autofocus. Um, other teleconverters might um, allow you to uh, get closer, but you might have a degraded image. So that's teleconverters in general. But today we're going to be heading out to the San Diego Safari Park to take a look at the Fujifilm 1.4 times uh, teleconverter and see how it fares. <laughs> So let's do a snapshot overview of some specs. Cost, about $450. It maintains light metering, image stabilization, and autofocus. The lens construction has seven elements in three groups. The weight without the lens caps is 130 grams. It's got a weather resistant construction. It's got some nice seals, which goes well with the X-T1 and the 50 to 140 lens. As a combo, it makes a great weather resistant camera. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking uh, pictures both with and without the teleconverter. So um, I'll show you the pictures in just a little while, but we'll, you'll be able to see the difference between the uh, telephoto nature of the converter. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pictures here. This first one here is without the teleconverter, and as you can see, uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's an excellent lens, but let's take a look at what it looks like with the teleconverter. And here you can see that it's a little bit closer and you can even see the eye of the flamingo here. Uh, nice detail on the feathers, etc. So um, not too much image degradation from the teleconverter and really nice um, color and saturation. So let's go ahead and go out to other parts of the park and check out other animals to go take pictures of. Hey, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So this is with the teleconverter actually attached. You can barely notice it. It only uh, increases the length of the lens just that much. So without it, it would just be this lens obviously uh, there. So not much in an addition, not much to carry around and you, know, you can't even tell that a teleconverter is on there. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like uh, with it attached. I'm actually getting some cool shots. These two birds are doing some cool things over there. So the 1.4 multiplier of the Fuji teleconverter makes this uh, 50 to 144 lens a 70 to 196. And with an APS-C sensor, it makes it a 105 to 294. So essentially I'm shooting at 294 millimeters right now. All right, so what you're seeing here is a crazy day at the Safari Park. It's not always like this, but there was a ton of people there to, uh, at that time. I did get some shots. Here's one of the gorilla without the teleconverter, and here's one with the teleconverter. I, I really like the color rendition. And here are a bunch of lemurs that were all huddled together because it was kind of a cold day. 
and here's with a teleconverter and I'm zooming in a little bit here so you can go check it out and you can see the the fur and everything nice detail so one thing about any teleconverter it doesn't matter what brand Canon Nikon any brand of teleconverter is going to have um, a reduction in light and any teleconverter that's over 1.0 multiplier is going to reduce the amount of light. It's simple physics. It has nothing to do with the brand or how well it was designed. So this uh, 1.4 multiplier therefore reduces it by one stop of light. In other words, this 2.8 lens now becomes an f4 lens. Uh, however, a good sort of um, thing that happens is on the uh, other end of the aperture. The minimum stoppage of this is at f22. But because of the 1.4 multiplier, it now becomes a uh, f32, which is really good if you're doing any long exposures, things like that. Now that's at a 1.4 multiplier. If this teleconverter was a 2.0 multiplier, you'd lose two stops of light. So it gets even dimmer. And sometimes you even lose uh, autofocus and the ability for any metering or le any electronics to actually work. You have to do a lot of things manually. So something else to consider if you're thinking about getting a teleconverter. All right, so one thing you should know is that the teleconverter, the current Fujifilm 1.4 times teleconverter, currently on today, in December 2015, is not compatible with any other lens except the 50 to 144. And that is because of the way it's constructed. If you notice right here, there is a protrusion and it sticks out and it's designed to only fit with certain lenses, okay? Um, and you can't retrofit the lens in order for it to work because if you take a look at, here's a conventional lens in 18 to 55, there is simply no way that that protrusion is going to allow this to attach. So it's not as though you can just attach this to any lens. Currently in the lineup, the 50 to 144 is the only one that will uh, take the teleconverter, but I know that Fujifilm has in the future plans. Uh, there's a lot of speculation that the upcoming 100 to 400 lens, which would totally make sense because it is also a telephoto uh, lens, would uh, fit on this and therefore be able to be used by it. So just by the design, and that happens a lot with teleconverters, they're only usable with certain lenses. So uh, one reason to consider whether or not you want to get a teleconverter or not, because it's not going to work with every single lens. So I hope that was helpful for you. And this may not seem like a lightweight pocket lens type camera, but relative to DSLRs, it is a actually lightweight, uh, compact system. And so we've got some decent pictures, uh, some nice comparisons between the telephoto lens uh, with and without the teleconverter. Uh, my name is Sonny Portacio, and for more information on how to use mirrorless uh, camera systems or compact camera systems to get great pictures, head over to pocketlenses.com.